Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Our job is to consecrate ourselves to God. And if we do that day in and day out, God is going to show up and show off. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Win the day. All right. Hey, good morning. I am so glad you guys came this morning. And I think you're going to be super glad too. uh, Because it just so happens that today, everybody who is in attendance, I'm going to give every family that's in attendance a copy of my new book. So make sure you get that where you head out. Um, I'm, I'm kind of partial to this book. I like it almost more than any other book I've ever written uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's fiction. Uh, so if you're, into, um, if you're not into reading nonfiction, this is a super light read. It takes about, even for slow readers, they've all told me it takes about an hour and a half to read. It's about a guy who goes on an adventure he just totally does not expect. So um, you can pick that up on the way out, one per family. I do ask one thing in exchange. If you wouldn't mind, if you could go on Amazon and leave a review for it when you're done, um, it doesn't have to be some flowery review. In fact, if you just want to put the star, whatever. Um, uh, I still need a couple negative reviews. So if you want to be the person to leave a negative review, um, that would be good. I was telling the first service, you know, uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me was my first book when it came out. Like the first day it came out, somebody wrote this scathing review of my first book. And I was so devastated. My brother's like, flip it around, turn it around. And I was like, well, how would I do that? So I took, I said, hey, man, this guy really hates me on Amazon. And I posted it on a Facebook and I was like, check out this guy's review. And I put the link to Amazon and it drove so much traffic to Amazon on that page. And they actually bought the book that, I, that Amazon sold out that night of my book. I was like, take that. So in Jesus name, of course. Um, so anyways, that book's available for you. If you wouldn't mind leaving a review, you'll probably have it read by this afternoon, right? You got nothing else to do. It was raining out there. It might even snow. So let it snow and, and read the book. So anyways, hey, we're talking about today, uh, win the day. Now, I'm guessing that everybody, one of you in here has at some point thought this. If you haven't, just give it a few days and you'll think this. How am I going to make it through 2021? You know, I thought that on December 31st, everything was going to change. You know, as soon as the clock ticks over, COVID goes away, you know, all the the, the, uh, political strife would go away, but it didn't. Was anybody expecting that to happen on January 1st? Any real optimists? Yeah, they say optimists are the ones who stay up till midnight to ring in the new year, and pessimists are the ones who stay up to make sure that new year, that old year leaves. Uh, that was me. I'm like, we're well, staying up to make sure that leaves and kicks it out the door. So 2021, you're looking at 2021, you're going, man, it's not looking promising that things are going to get any better. In fact, you hear all the experts that we supposedly listen to because they're experts, but they get it wrong a lot. But they say, it's going to get worse and worse before it gets better. And we're going, oh my gosh, how am I going to make it through? And you're looking at the political situation saying, how am I going to make it through? And you're looking at all these people in the hospital and saying, how am I going to make it through? And you're looking at companies are still laying off. And then, but it's this weird kind of confusing thing we live in, isn't it? Have you ever had that? You go, I have no clue what's going on. I don't understand. This is not the world I understand. And we're all at that place. And we're asking, how am I going to make it through? So we're going to talk today about how you're going to make it through 2021. And the real simple way is, you know how you're going to make it through 21? One day at a time. And that is what's so, you know, you hear all this bad news around us. And then Marcus told, Pastor Marcus told me, hey, I want to do a series called Win the Day. And I was like, win the day. But then I realized, you know what? That's the only way we're going to make it through 2021 is winning each day at a time. You've got to live in day tight compartments. In fact, Jesus said that when he was on the earth. He said, guys, listen, I know you've got a lot of stuff you're worried about. I know you're worried about your finances, your health, where you're going to live, what you're going to eat. And he said, but I want to tell you something. Hey, don't worry. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Have you ever been around somebody that's just obnoxiously calm? When they're like freaking out and they're like, oh, don't worry, it'll work out. And you're like, no, you don't understand. This is really bad. And they're like, it's okay, man. It's okay. And you're like, hello, you're ignoring the facts. You could look at Jesus that way and you say, well, it's easy for you to say. 
you're the son of God. Like, God is your dad. Like, you're God in the flesh, too. This weird God combo man thing. Of course you would say, don't worry. But he's talking to us and saying, don't worry. But here's the thing. This verse right here, Matthew 6, 34, comes right after probably one of the most important verses in the whole Bible, which is Matthew 6, 33 where Jesus basically says, here's the most important thing you'll ever do, guys, in life. He says, basically, he's saying, if you want to get this promise that you don't have to worry about tomorrow, you've got to listen to the whole package and what I said right before it. And you know what he said right before it? He said, listen, guys, seek first my kingdom, God's kingdom, and his righteousness, and all the stuff you're worried about, it'll be taken care of. He'll give you all those things you're looking for. It says you're worried about what you're going to eat, where you're going to live, where you're going to live, what you're going to wear. But I'm telling you, seek first the kingdom and the righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And he's saying, if you want to do this, you got to do it every day. You got to get up and seek first the kingdom of God. Now, here's what's fascinating to me. This verse does not say every morning, get up and seek first what your friends on Facebook are saying about how things are going down. It doesn't say, get up and seek first what the news says about the talking heads on the news say what's going down. Seek first what the weather report says. Seek first how you feel. No. So is that, no, 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 no. Every morning, if you want to do this thing right, if you want to be able to not worry about tomorrow, the way you start by doing it is you get up every morning and you seek first the kingdom of God what he wants for you, his righteousness, and all the other things that you're worried about, they'll be taken care of as well. So then here's the thing. If you do that, you don't have to worry about anything. Just stay focused on today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we're going to look at something super practical today. Uh, I was thinking about this. Somebody asked me, they were like, how did you get so much done this year? And I, was, I started looking back. I was like, wow, I did get a lot done in 2020 in spite of what a, my normal year didn't happen. Normally, I would have done a lot of adventure trips and been speaking all over the country. But instead, none of that happened. I got to be here with you guys more. And then I ended up writing three books last year. And they're like, how did you do that? I was like, I, I, honestly, I don't know. And so I started thinking about what is it that I did? And I want to share with you guys my little insider secret. And I think this is This is in many ways backed up by the Bible, what I'm going to share with you for how to win each day. And here's what I found in my life. When I do this, when I'm going to share to you these five simple steps, when I do this, things go really well for me. Like I am incredibly productive. I feel peace. I feel confidence. But what will happen every once in a while is I'll start, I'll be really tracking hard. And then all of a sudden I'll start feeling like off and like not have a good day. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'll look back and I'll realize I didn't follow these five things I was talking about. And you ever had that where you got a really good discipline going and then you just kind of fall out of it and then you're like, oh, I'm miserable, I hate life. And you're like, oh, I stopped doing what I knew to do. C.S. Lewis one time said, he said, most of us need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. You just got to be reminded. So this is your gentle reminder for you this morning. Some of you, this may be the first time you've heard anything like this. If that's cool, it works. This stuff works, I'm telling you. And if you'll follow these things, I believe that you can win every day, one day at a time, and we'll get to the end of the year and you'll go, wow, this was a good year in spite of everything that was going on around you. So y'all ready for this? All right, y'all want to write this down, okay? Here's the first one. Every morning, get up, pray, and ask for wisdom before you do anything else. Before you turn on that phone and look and see what the Twitter is saying, the Facebook, the Instagram, don't look at that stuff yet. Say, first thing in the morning, I'm going to dedicate it to God. Before you say, well, I need my coffee first. Okay, maybe you can get your coffee. But here's the thing. You have got to make sure that the first thing your mind goes to, and I'm telling you, when I, when I, I find that when my day goes bad, it's because I started looking at something in the morning that set my mind on a course that wasn't seeking first the kingdom of God. Make sure that this is the first thing you do. So you get up and you say, Lord, what am I supposed to do today? That's what it says here. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, submit to him and he'll make your path straight. In James, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask of God who's willing to give it to anyone without reproach. Basically, he says, God will give anybody that asks for wisdom, he'll give them wisdom. No matter how dumb they've been in the past, no matter how much bad mistakes they've made, even if they made mistakes minutes before, if you ask for wisdom at any moment, he will give it to you. But then James says this, but if you ask, you don't doubt that he's going to give it to you because then you're just going to be like a wave of the sea. So you say, God, I'm up this morning. I've got my plans that I think of things I need to do, but I'm going to pray and, and show me what I need to do. And here's what, what's fascinating what will happen. You've probably noticed this. When you start to pray, what happens? Your mind is flooded with all of the stuff you need to do. Like, oh man, I get the oil changed in the car. And like, here's what you do. Just keep a pen and paper handy and write it down and put it away and get back to praying. God, what am I supposed to do today? And here's this weird thing. God will show you what you need to do, but here's what he'll also show you. A lot of times he'll show you what you don't need to do. I've found this over and over again that I've got this long list of things. And as I spend time in prayer, God starts to show me, you don't actually need to do that thing. I'll give you an example of this, super practical. When I wrote my most, this, uh, the book before this one, Love Slows Down, I wrote a small devotional for it. Um, it wasn't small, actually. It was a huge devotional. It was like 25,000 word devotional. I wrote this big six week devotional and I spent all this time working and I got it all edited. And then I got nervous because I'm like, man, I've done a lot of work like this before. I spent hours on this thing. I'm like, I've done a lot of work like this before and nobody reads it. And so I was like, Lord, I really need you to bless this book I'm doing. And I, I felt this sense within me that the Lord said, I, you don't need to do that book. I'm like, yes, I do. I need some sort of Bible study to go with it. And he's like, no, you don't need to book that. Don't do that book. And I'm like, I just spent all this time on this book. Well, a few days later, this opportunity pops up for me to take that, to write some devotionals for the YouVersion Bible app. And I was like, oh, well, I have the content already written. So I took my little devotional that I never made and I gave it over to YouVersion, put it in YouVersion Bible app format. And listen to me, like 135,000 people have downloaded that app. Now, if I would have made a little workbook, I'm confident that number would be like 35. <laughs> but God told me, nope, you don't need to do that. And I started realizing, man, how often do I do stuff that I think is so important? And God's like, you don't need to do that. A lot of praying is just asking God, what do I not need to do? And he'll show that to you if you start the morning praying and asking for wisdom. And then don't doubt that he's going to give it to you. He'll give you that list of things to do. So here's the thing. You start to get that list. What do I need to do? What do I need to do, Lord? And the next step is this. Make a plan. Write down the stuff that he tells you to do. This verse here, it says, where there's no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. When you don't have a direction, when you don't have parameters for where you're supposed to be going, you're just going to do whatever. And the simplest way to make a vision for your day, some of y'all ain't going to like this, is to make a list. My wife is one of those. She's not into lists. She's like, they cramp my style. I just want to do it when I feel like doing it. But here's the thing about a list. And she's going to, I'm going to hear about this later because you'd be like, you called me out about not making lists. But listen, Lists are so helpful because we just forget stuff. She's like, but a list is, you know, and this is the thing about a list. It's like, it's hanging over my head. Yes, I agree. It is hanging over your head. And I, sometimes I'm like, I don't even want to look at that list. It's so full of things to do. But a list will help you get organized in what needs to be done. It's a simple parameters. It's that vision for how to conquer your day. And don't make the list endless. But what do you say, Lord, what of this list do I need to do today? And then ask him for wisdom and he'll show you. This may be the most practical message I've ever given, by the way, but this stuff works, y'all. This is like where real spirit-led living works, where you like, this is where it works. So write it down. Number three, start the day by completing one thing on your list. Build momentum. Dave Ramsey, he's this financial guru. He says, if you want to get out of debt, the first thing you've got to do is pay off the smallest debt first. He go, well, that doesn't make any sense. The big debt's the one that's accruing the, accruing the most interest. He says, nope, you pay off the small debt first because here's the thing, you got to build momentum. You got to help yourself realize you can do it. Now, now, here's the crazy thing about this. Jesus actually talked about this principle and there's like neurological um, and scientific evidence to prove that this is a, tr a true case. Says, he says this, for the one who has, this is probably one of the least sensitive things Jesus ever said. He said, for the one who has, more will be given and he will have an abundance. Wait, wait, what? Huh? But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
This is talking about the principle of stewardship. When you use what you have, no matter how little it may seem, God will give you more. When you don't use it, you'll lose even what you have. And what happens a lot of times is we say, well, I don't have as much as so-and-so over there to work with, money or time or energy, whatever it is. And God's saying, I don't care how much they have. Stop comparing yourself to them. What do you have? And how are you going to use it today to the best of your ability? Because here's the thing, if you'll use that, he'll multiply it. But if you don't, it gets taken away. There's this crazy, there's studies neurologically that say that, you know, like some of the most prominent, eminent people in our country, like, like people that are, we know very well who they are, famous people, most of them grew up in small towns. And there have been studies done on it. And they say that the reason that those, ki- those people got to the place they were is because they were in a small enough environment where they learned what it, what it felt like to, to win at something to get momentum, to get it right. Like they were the best singer in their town or they were the best artist in their town. And there's something that actually, serotonin actually fires in your body when you feel like you've conquered something and it actually energizes your body and you start to feel, this sounds like it's a weird thing to say, but you feel like a winner. There's actually neurological chemical proof of this in your body and you start to feel like a winner and you get used to that feeling and that's where the momentum comes from. You pay off the small debt. You're like, dude, I just paid off that debt. I guess I can knock out the next one. And you knock out that next one. And the same thing happens day by day. And that's why it's so important to get a win, get a W on your, on your, your checklist for that day. So do whatever you can to get something done immediately that you need to get done that day. Just suck it up and do it. Again, most practical message here. But there's, there's literally this, not only something Jesus said, but there's also science, which interestingly enough, everything Jesus said has science to back it up. We just haven't figured it out yet. Um, Every ology is a branch of theology, biology. All of those things came straight from God himself. And that's what he says. He's like, listen, if you'll use what you got, it will build something in you and it'll give you the confidence to attack the bigger and bigger and bigger things. But you got to start small, aim low. So you start and you get a win. And then here's what you got to do. You got to end the day by celebrating what you accomplished, which is honestly, I don't do that, guys. You know what I usually do? I end the day thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff I got to do tomorrow. And then I've broken out of the daytight compartment, haven't I? And Jesus says, no, no, don't worry about tomorrow. Today's got enough to worry about. Focus on today. And so what you've got to do is you've got to say, up, oh, up. Oh, I got to look back at that list that I made and see what I got done. And you're going to be amazed at what you got done. And you're going to also be amazed that some of the things maybe that God told you you didn't need to get done. And then you realize, I actually didn't need to get that done. But it will be because you listened to his voice in the morning first thing, and you sought his kingdom rather than your circumstances that are going on around you, what people are telling you you should think about the circumstances going on around you, what your friends are thinking, their opinions. You first sought his voice, and that is what it comes down to every day, guys. You do this day in and day out, and here's what I can promise you. I've seen this in my own life. When I do this day in and day out, man, the momentum starts to build, And God starts doing little things. And it's the stuff you do every day that makes the difference. The little things every day. And it builds and it builds. And all of a sudden, you're going through January. Like, man, January went pretty good. February, you're like, wow, I'm getting a lot done this year. March now. And the whole world is, you know, in chaos around you. But right there in the middle of it, you're at peace in the middle of the storm because you're seeking his kingdom first every day. And you're moving forward right in the middle of the chaos. Come March, April, May, June, you're going to be like, wow, this year is going good. July, August, September, October, November, and come around December this year, you're going to look back and you're going to say, dude, this was a good year. Sure, it looks chaotic around me, but I am confident that God was doing something in me as I was disciplined and put listening to his voice into practice. It's day by day by day. You just do it day by day, which brings me to the fifth and final step. Here's the final step, all right? Repeat steps one through five the next day. You get up and you do it again. You get up in the morning before you turn on that phone, before you look at that phone, you may need to get a regular alarm clock, folks. You may need to get a flip phone for a while and detox from from social media, right? Social media will mess with your head. It's that cumulative effect of that stuff, guys. You may say, I'm going to wake up every morning. And and here's the great thing about what I've taught you today. This stuff here today, you don't need the internet to do it. You don't need a phone to do it. You don't need the opinion of the political commentators about what's going on in the world to do it. It's just you and God and a pen and paper. 
and you can win every day. So you get up and you pray for wisdom. And you ask God what you're supposed to do. You sit down, you write it down so you don't forget. Then you go do it. And he may say, hey, today I need you to go talk to Joe at the office. And you say, Joe, what about? Well, Joe's struggling right now. Well, no. Joe looks fine to me. Nope, I need you to go talk to him. And here's the thing, guys. I've never heard an audible voice of God. So this may appear more like a prompting. Like we're just like, man, I really feel like I need to talk to Joe, but there's no reason I need to talk to Joe. You need to follow that. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It won't necessarily be a voice or an angel from on high. It'll be this gentle feeling. I need to do that. And then you go talk to Joe and find out he's really struggling in his marriage. And you listen to the voice of God and you were the hands and feet of Jesus that day. And you did something that day, very effective because you listened to the voice of God, not to what you saw or didn't see. You heard right in here with those eyes of your heart we were talking about earlier. Then you go do it. You implement what you saw and take the small steps, no matter how small it may seem, little by little. And then you get up in the morning and do it all again. And you keep doing that and you will win the day. I can guarantee it. I've seen it in my life over and over again. It's every day. Just get up and do it. And you say, but what about, what about, what about? Nope. Stop asking those questions. What if so-and-so ends up, you know, winning this election after all or whatever? Or so on, or, you know, whatever it is, whoever you're against or for, whatever, and you're freaking out about it. Hey, you do what you're called to do. Get up in the morning, stand up straight, ask God what you're supposed to do. What about COVID? Don't worry about COVID. You get up in the morning, stand up straight, ask God what you're supposed to do, and then go do it. You do that, man, and you will win this year. Not because you're so great, but it's because of the discipline that, he's, that he wants to pour into your life and give you the strength to do it. And you'll accomplish things you never thought you could have accomplished. So much of it starts right up here, guys. Right here. That's where the battle starts. So make sure your, your morning starts off. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm not going to seek anything else first. First thing, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's so simple, but it, the man, it's the simplest things that take you the furthest. You guys receive that? Yes. Awesome. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that, man, regardless of what's going on around us, there is victory inside of us because the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in us. We thank you, Lord, that you care about us. You have a plan and a purpose for us. We're not here by accident in this moment in time. We have a destiny. So Lord, I pray we wouldn't get swept up in all the stuff we see around us, Lord. The only thing we get swept up in is how do I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness this morning? And then the next day, how do I seek first the kingdom of God? So I pray you give us the power to do that. Lord, bring it to our remembrance when we're getting off. We may remind us, yeah, hey, you didn't start the morning out seeking my kingdom first. So Lord, I pray that we'd walk in that and we're gonna be victorious people. I'm confident of that. If you're here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, the first step to getting on the path to where God has for you is you've got to surrender your life to him. You know who you are. As I've been talking, you already know who you are. So I'm going to say this prayer in a second. If you say it and you mean it in your heart, Jesus is going to come in and take you from the kingdom of darkness and give you a new destiny in the kingdom of light. Let's all say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us to walk in your truth. Help us to seek your kingdom first. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's a good way to start the year. Check in with guest services in the back. You'll get a copy of that book I wrote, and you'll also get some resources to help you on the way. Just let them know you just gave your life to Jesus. You guys stand. I pray you guys have a great week. Man, start this today. Start tomorrow. Well, no, don't start tomorrow. Start it today. Go reboot your day by going home and uh, seeking the kingdom of God, and, and then read this book and leave a review. Okay, anyway. Be blessed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.